Welcome to Woman of the Word podcast, answering the unasked questions. We are on episode 29 today. Welcome, ladies, and to the gentlemen who are watching. Um, first, we do have some real impact updates. Uh, in public schools last week, they were celebrating Bisexuality Awareness Week. Now, do you know if your children or your child was celebrating or um, informed anything about the U.S. Constitution? Uh, September 17th is actually Constitution Day, and at our educational center, we got to celebrate not only Constitution Day, but Constitution Week, in which we just told our children the truth of history and how it all came to be, all the different branches of government, how many people signed the document, um, who signed the document the biggest, um, so on and so forth, and we made it fun for our children. Now, it's disheartening that children in America are are subjected to such things such as Bisexuality Awareness Week. Um, and it's not done with that. This week, they will be celebrating Banned Books Week. That is the American Library Association who is putting that on full blast, encouraging children, okay, children, okay, I'm talking young, young children, to go and read the books that are in public schools that we so-called book banners want to get rid of. These are the pervasively vulgar books. These are the pornography uh, books that are in our children's schools that are talking about rape, incest, um, how to do these incredibly um, detailed sex acts it's just absolutely disgusting and they want children to read these books these are books that you know teachers give to kids to use for homework assignments um to do uh, papers and essays and so on and so forth on and we have children who are even going to school boards reading these books because the teachers are putting them in their schools they're in our libraries they're in the children's curriculum they can be checked out even digitally so that you know you can go and read these books without the parents knowing what is being read um it's really evil that these things are going on in our schools and there's so many other things going on as well please keep an eye on real impact oceanside not only do we put posts but check out the stories as well those are about 24 hours on there but they're important things that just need to be taken action on quickly so um, i encourage you to stay updated on real impact oceanside um continue to uh, keep your eyes as, as well on what we're doing because we're getting our voter guide ready and we still want to encourage you guys to keep your eyes out for what we'll be suggesting you do not vote for or what you should vote for again such as uh proposition three um with that it is saying that not only can you marry the same gender but you can marry a child that you can marry an animal that you can marry an object that you can marry multiple people so um obviously it's an attack and a war on children a war on families christians and just marriage the sanctity of life so on and so forth it is a war it's a spiritual war and we need to stay updated and informed and together in unity um, that's what I have for today. Everything else you can find on Real Impact Oceanside. Um, yeah, it's intense out there and it's building up indefinitely. I mean, there's no end to what we see coming. A lot of these bills that we're waiting uh, to see if they get passed are on Governor Newsom's desk. We're waiting to see if he signs it or vetoes a lot of these things that we're waiting on. But definitely keep your eyes open. There's a lot going on. Um, the legislation process has ended for this um, this year. Right now, they've gone back to their homes, their offices, so on and so forth, so that they can focus on local things. Um, so there's not going to be any recent bills like we've been voting on and urging you to support and oppose, but there's still a lot going on and a lot happening. So Real Impact Oceanside has not stopped. Um, as we said last week when I put out that little clip, we're working on getting a lot of things together and we have only a, a short amount of time with the army that the Lord has given us uh, a few, small but mighty. So we are blessed. Um, it's time consuming, but it will definitely be worth it. And the Lord's bringing a lot of people to our church who are just on board for and with what we are doing so it's truly awesome to see what god's doing so praise god for that amen mm -hmm. you know one of the things i wanted to point out that when you were saying talking about real impact oceanside is as you're listening i want you to think about um 
lo locally where you're at. So like whatever city your church is in, your ministry is in, really even just start there. If it's something as simple as that, just or it is very simple, just starting within your own city and seeing how you can serve your city, make an impact in your city, whether it's raising awareness or running for a position, um, you know, whatever that God puts on your heart. But I think it's very important that you look at um, your your neighborhood. You're you're right in the right in your backyard, and it's and that's what we did. That's how we started. You know, with real impact, Oceanside, um, reaching our city here, um, reaching our community in the sense of raising awareness, right? Um, and then you'll see as we put the voter guide out um, who we personally are going to endorse on the voter guide locally here and of course um, nationally as a personal um you know every one of us individually yeah um just and then our reasonings for that and again it's it's a personal decision because we can't tell you who to vote for but we can only lead you to the facts to what each candidate um, believes in what they represent and how does that line with your biblical values mm -hmm. and that's really easy in the sense of uh, when you think about ev everything entirely. But anyways, all that to say is talk in regards to Real Impact Oceanside and what Nicole's been doing, it's, it's important that you do start locally. So whatever city that you're in, whatever city your church is in, your ministry or, um, or state for that matter, um, I would start there and then begin to in you'll see how you can make an impact and a difference. So yeah, Absolutely. I just wanted to say that. Absolutely. And also on Real Impact Oceanside, you can find on Facebook on our link, um, there is a party comparison uh, platform available for you. So you can go and compare, you know, the Republican Party, the Democratic Party uh, on different things going on in society today, whether it's marriage, abortion, um, all the LGBTQ uh, stuff going on in our schools. You can go and look at that and see what the Republican Party supports, what the Democratic Party supports. And then look at it. Where are your values? Where do they go there? Don't put your values in one single person, right? Our values should be in God um, as Christians. So obviously that aligns more with the Republican Party, at least for myself. I don't know where you're at in your walk, but I definitely recommend it. It's available in English and in Spanish because we do not want to leave anybody out. Um, but the good thing about technology, uh, obviously it could be scanned and translated into other languages too. But Praise God for that. Keep your eyes open, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. So with that, we'll, we'll open up in prayer and then get started. Um, and we're glad to be back. Like I said, we've obviously been real busy behind the scenes. I know we do a little clip clips of updates of everything that's been going on, but it's, it's, it's been a blessing to be able to serve our church, serve our community. Um, I mean, that's really what uh, church, uh, church the church body is all about, right? Because we're the church, it's not the building. And so um, we're, we're excited to be back for, for a yes. episode. <laughs> so let's go. the word. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity to be able to reach your women out there. Um, the leaders, the pastor's wives, women who are just serving in ministry. And Father, we pray that you would bless them, protect them, and um, just open their eyes to the truth that you want them to be able to see, Lord God, at, especially during this season and this time that we're in. So Father, we praise you and we thank you. And as always, this, this is your podcast. This is your Women of the Word. We are just um, here as your vessels to deliver whatever it is you have for um, the women and, and women out there listening. So Father, we praise you and we thank you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. So we haven't gone through a lot. Um, if you haven't had a chance to go through the book of Isaiah, um, you know, like we've done before um, in previous episodes, uh, right now we're, we're all the way in Isaiah 22. I think it's important that you go verse by verse throughout God's word. Um, and, and Isaiah 22 brings such a powerful, um, gosh, message, maybe warning to, to so many of us. And I know um, when we're looking at that today um, or yesterday in, in, in Sunday church, um, we were realizing um, how, Pastor, how Pastor Adam was just doing that correlation. 
Um, and one thing that really stuck out with me in how, you know, at the time, Israel, this is uh, recording to Isaiah 22, how they were, they were so pumped, they were so prideful, and they were so, um, yeah. There is no God, right? And 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 when you look at the state of our country today, I feel as if that's what has happened. You know, when you look at I, you know, last week we did Constitution Week, and um, we, for example, um, I think I shared this last time about the National Monument and just the foundation of why so many people, so many Christians, fled here to um, this. Um, part of the world because they wanted to break free and actually serve God without without the tyrannical leaders, the religious even leaders, because um, there was, you know, if you look throughout church history, which I won't get into that because it's a whole other episode. <laughs> yeah, but um, so when we're looking at Isaiah 22, we see how it's, um, how it connects, how here in America, I remember, for example, growing up, and um, when you would, you know, check off the box at, in college or, or anything that you would fill out, they'd ask you what your religion is. And I would always put Christian. And I remember um, in my early years in college how, um, like, so many of us in that whole, like, I, I don't want to call it, uh, well, we'll just, let me just say. So, and I remember just being challenged. I remember my very first time where... Um, I was asked, so why do you believe what you believe, you know, and all of those things, all of those questions that are just you, and let, let me set that aside. So uh, what I'm trying to say is this, is I remember having that question asked of me. And then I remember sitting there, I think I was like 19 years old or something like that. Yeah, I was like 19, 20. And I remember thinking, I don't know why I believe what I believe. I don't even know why I'm a, I'm a Christian, why I check off that I'm a Christian or why I say I'm a Christian. But then when I look back at it, so many of us just title ourselves, oh, I'm a Christian, I'm a believer, because maybe my parents brought me to church and I'm a Christian. Maybe I was, you know, accepted Jesus. Maybe it really didn't mean anything to me. I got baptized. For me, example, I was 13. But it didn't really make sense to me because it wasn't lived out in, in, in a daily manner in the sense of, um, you know, having the good mentorship around me. So, But I just labeled myself as a Christian and I just went about my day living in, in the culture, right? Doing uh, the successful things that you think you would do and label yourself a Christian. And so when we look back at Israel, they were getting to this point where they believe that because of their own strength and their own riches and things like that, that they believe that they acquired on their own. And they, and so, cha I mean, chapter 22 was just mind boggling. It just really made me think of my own personal walk. I remember at 19 years old, having to, to grapple with that question. And I didn't have an answer because I had no idea. And thankfully CS, uh, I'm sorry, Lee Strobel was during that time. And thankfully for him, thank God, you know, with the case for Christ and all that, yeah. that was like a blessing for at least, I mean, this is years ago. I won't say my, well, I don't care what my age is, but anyways, <laughs> but then you see in, in Isaiah 22, and one of the things that stuck out to me is how, because God is such a loving God. He's like, and you know, here's these people, they could care less. They can go off and drink and be merry. They can care less about tomorrow. They care less about eternity. But then God and his loving mercy and grace was just like, just all you need to do mm. is just repent. Repent of your evil ways. Turn back to me and and I will forgive you of your sins, right? We see that throughout all of scripture. And, and that's what I love about studying mm. not just the Old Testament, but the entirety of God's word because God is such a loving and merciful God. He does not, not want mm. one to perish but yet we get so caught up in um, so many things and the way um, society makes us believe that, um, you know, that God's not, God cannot forgive us for this. God cannot do um, any uh, of, uh, just lost my train of thought. I got sidetracked because we're in this, we're in uh, a studio here, but then we also have <laughs> apparently other things They're going on. That time. Yeah, amen. Spanish. So, um, but anyways, that's that's for me, um, and I just wanted to say that, and um, and it's just such a blessing. So go ahead, uh, Nicole. 
I'll let you take off. It's, it's funny. I put my son in charge of keeping the clothes. So I heard it. He just posed it. That's okay. Funny. Amen. Go ahead. No, absolutely. And I mean, it just really made it sound like a lot of things going on right now, right? The prideful or the ones who are re relying on the Lord in their walk, in their life, and everything. And it just, I mean, it's just yeah. notes right there. I mean, from verse two and verse seven and 11 i mean and verse two they're prideful because they thought that they couldn't be touched because they're currently protected right so they were refusing god because they thought that they had a better way how many times are we like that do we refuse god because we think that we can do it better i mean throughout all of recovery right we've all been through recovery mm -hmm. as ladies who are on here right now and we constantly try to do it on our own through our own way and we put everything aside and even coming into recovery trying to do it god's way there's still times where we would try to do it our own way or even just now right i still have a hard time asking for help or just seeking the lord like okay i really can't do it on my own god your way is definitely better and i know we all get like that we stress out and we're like okay we need to make it perfect we didn't have to do any of that. God handled it perfectly or just wasn't even meant to be. And we didn't even need to spend that energy and time um, on whatever the matter was or the person was. We did all that for nothing when we could have just been like, God, what do we need to do? Help us, Lord. Um, and then it's just taking the garbage, as Pastor Adam said, and putting in good things. So removing all of that junk. What are we doing in our lives? What are we doing when we're at home? Especially during this fast. Yesterday, I was like, okay, um, I'm not going to read into my mystery novels, right? During this fast. The new one just came out. And it's something simple like that. It could be something simple or something really complex. But it's like taking that garbage out and putting in good things. Okay, spending time with my son. Spending time in prayer. Uh, when I'm reading my Bible, you know, taking notes I, it sticks better right when i'm taking those notes doing a word comparison search with uh, through the blue letter bible and you know seeing what it means from greek to hebrew and just really writing down all of those words and spending more time putting in good things and that's what they weren't doing they were refusing to spend their time with god they were refusing to even acknowledge god like pastor adam said they were partying instead because they're like forget it i'm gonna die anyway i'm gonna live yeah. my life but how many times do we, do we hear that you know live fast die young or you know and <laughs> party hard you're gonna die anyway yeah. the reality is that's just the devil's voice in there saying you know do all this distraction from God and that they were 100% distracted because they were focused on themselves yeah. and them themselves. They were the idol. They were their own gods in, in a way of putting it right because they took their eyes off of God, knowing everything that he had done from A to Z. They didn't care. They took their eyes off of that. And that's how we can get. We can take our eyes off of God when we forget because we're distracted by the, the present tense, by the thing in the moment. I mean, we have all these giants right here, right now that we're facing during election season and informing our congregation and welcoming people who are coming into our church and loving them or being discerning on who's kind of suspicious in the church and you know we have to be aware of all of that but we can't do any of that without god right there at the center of it and then it says god said it's going to get worse than it is now if you don't turn your eyes on to me and and it absolutely will god doesn't lie we know that god always keeps his word verse 11 they still tried to do it on their own they still didn't turn to god they didn't show him any respect because they were relying on their own strength and i love how pastor adam put it he says who do you feed the most are you feeding the flesh or are you feeding the spirit I like and i loved it Whoever you're feeding the most is what is going to be stronger in your life. We have all been in the flesh. We can get like that when we get angry, when someone tries us, you know, we're on the road or someone gives us an attitude in the, the grocery store. We see some, as my son calls them now, thanks to my beautiful sister, oh, Gucci no, mamas, no, no. right? <laughs> you know, those are distractions. But who are you feeding? Who are you feeding the most? And I honestly, I, I'm not going to lie. I lost my temper the other day. I yelled at my son and that hurt his feelings. And he was like, mom. And I, another time I turned too fast around a car. He was like, mom, what are you doing? That was really irresponsible. You could have killed yourself. You could have killed me. And I was like, oh, chill, don't correct me. Right. But in that time I was in the flesh and it can start with little things like that and it can grow. But 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to even take it a step further. The other night, two nights ago, I was having some weird dreams from the past, like things, but not me in the past, me in the present. Okay. And the Lord put a scripture right there. Amen. He said, if you fall into temptation, that temptation will lead to sin. And then that sin will bring forth death. And that mm. was like, whoa, that was him speaking to me. There may be some temptations coming. There may be some temptations to those around you who are being tempted. But remember, remind them, remind yourself. When you go and you're in the flesh, if you give in to that temptation, you will go and sin. And that sin, if you keep doing that sin, it's going to lead to death. And that death is separation from God. Our eyes are off of God. So we need to continuously be feeding the Spirit 100%. And God called them to repent. But did they repent? No, they were still in their pride. Ooh, I want I don't even want to get that far, right? I don't want to be punished by God. I always tell my son or any of the kids, would you rather be corrected now or do you want God to correct you? And they're like, I'm sorry. Or I'm sorry, Miss Watson. You know, and it's, just, it's cute because they know. They know that God doesn't play around. They know that God is about his word. And as us as women of the word, we have to be about our word as well. And the word is Jesus Christ. He is the word, the living word. He's the truth, the life, the way, everything. He is everything. So we need to feed that everything. We need to be connected to to that everything we're doing a 40 day fast ladies you can join us if you want um but if you're going to do that fast be serious about it <laughs> feed yeah. the spirit not the flesh what i got amen <laughs> amen that was my watch is listening <laughs> he said he's serious <laughs> Praise God. Uh, that's awesome uh what i got from uh, Isaiah 22nd, what is it, 22? Isaiah 22 this morning. I, I, I look at that and how they um, they never called out to God just because they felt like they were okay, they're protected, um, and nothing can touch them. Mm. I feel like with that and how you were talking about the Christians that are out there that are not even registered to vote, you know, and, and the ones that are registered and not even voting, it's because it hasn't hit yet, okay? Mm -hmm. Um I feel like we're that voice that kind of sit out there and we're just constantly telling people, come on, this is the time. This is the time now. It's not later when everything is done and you're sitting yeah, there like, right, oh my God. Yeah, right. This is the time. And it, it feels like that's the battle right now. It's a spiritual battle because yes. the Christians are, are really just sitting back and thinking, okay, well, we're all okay. It's not, you know, because we're here locally. You know, yes. you, you can... You can watch um, nationally or watch um, Instagram and so forth, social media, and be like, oh, yeah, it's crazy out there. But in my town, it's still OK. You know, right now, um, the gas prices are kind of going down. You know, it, it's starting to look better. But that's pure manipulation right now. Absolutely. We, we all know the ones that are in, you know, we, we've known this from the last election. When it's closer to the time, everything is starting to look good. And they're they're yeah. starting to. Look, I mean, it can't look any better than what it is, and it's 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 not even good. But they're going to say, "Look at it. It's better now than how many years ago." You know. Um, but I feel like we're at that time right now, and it's, and relating back to Isaiah twenty second, the Christians are really just kind of sitting there. It's almost like you're hoping mm -hmm. that somebody else is going to do it. You're. And you're not doing anything. Just like um, I like that video, the 1916. Yeah. Um, at the very end, like he says, if you're not going to do anything, well, who? Who's going to do it and when? Amen. You know, and um, at, at this time, I'm glad that we're still able to, to get on here and we're talking, you know, and, um, spreading the word. Because at this point, we don't have to do anything. We're just here to be that that light. And yeah. the Holy Spirit will, will do what it's supposed to do. Um, so if, if for ladies out there, any kind of leadership, uh, pastor's wife and so forth, stay with it. It might seem like it's nothing because it's just you and your homegirls, like us right here, me and my homegirls, <laughs> women of the word. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it just seems like it's, it's, it's not working or maybe a lot of people are not listening. God is still with you, you know, um, we all, we were, I like that saying in this morning, like, um, 
There's not many of us, but it's still mighty because God is the one. Oh, we're small you know? and mighty. <laughs> yes. It doesn't take a whole bunch of people. It takes one or two. And really, that's how movement works. Um, we just, you stay uh, diligent to what you do, and you just keep God in front of it. And that's how it drives. Because at the end of the day, when all of this is done, whichever way it goes, God is still with us. You know, we will go, we will go through it either way because God is with us. Those that were ho- put their hope in something else, especially Christians, if you're putting everything that you have on the line on your pastor, on your leadership, um, or, or anybody that's close to you, if that's where you're going to put what you want, what you're going to do for for the election, because that's what's happening right now, and and it doesn't it doesn't go your way, who do you, who are you going to blame? Are you going to mm-hmm. blame that person that you're like, I thought you were going to do something. Well, what are you doing? Come on. What are you doing? Come by um, at the cross. We're here, you know, and we we have the the red voter registration. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. We have the guides are going to come out. Come by, grab some some flyers or whatever you have you want to take out and just hand it to a friend. Yeah, you know, everybody's too uh, you know too pretty out there taking their little selfie and putting it up on Instagram. Take a picture of the voting guy. Put it up there. <laughs> no one's going to get mad at you. They're just going to be like, Amen. oh, you're voting? Uh, yeah, I'm a Christian. I'm going to vote. My Amen. one vote will always count because God Absolutely. Asked, Come you on. are meant to vote. So um, that really ties into Isaiah. and That's where we're at. We're just like, oh, nobody's really. I mean, in, 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 in the bigger picture, it looks like that the voters are. But we see the numbers. And it's it's not moving. So mm-hmm. ladies, Come on. leadership out there, talk to your talk to your sheep. Because that's what that's you're good. Doing. I love that. I know that <laughs> and that that is just so important. That's been resonating with me because we we do have a candidate, right, who's faltering to beliefs in God to go on the political side. And I just thought about it because I mean I, I told Cleta myself, I was like, I'm not gonna do that, just so you know. She's like, I know you won't. But I just thought about it. Our, our audience are the ones we want to reach. I want to reach are the Christians, right? Yeah. Think yeah. about it. God, God's going to handle the results. But the ones I want to reach with my beliefs and what I want to do for whatever mm-hmm. I run for. Yeah. Imagine all those Christians who are informed and who will vote. Mm-hmm. Them. Those are numbers that political party, political correctness, so on and so forth, can't even match, can't even touch right, like yeah. that, which is right. like, wow, right. if people realize that, if they stood on that, if they were informed, mobilized Christians, especially in California, mm-hmm. with God on their side, yeah. whoa. I like that. Yeah, wow. I mean, like, that's powerful because why do you think they're so big on gaslighting everything? Why do you think they're so big and trying to make you, anytime somebody would mention anything that's in the right, they're like, oh, you're, you're racist, you're mm-hmm. this and that. Why do you think they're so big in that? Because they want you to lose that faith that you have. But remember, God, goodness, you know what I'm saying? It's like, we just smile. It's like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's nice. It, it, like Pastor said, I ran out of cheeks. I was turning <laughs> left and right. I gave it to you, but I'm done. <laughs> I'm going to have to handle that right now, girlfriend. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, it was, like, it was, yeah. That's true. You'll have to watch this. We're at, we're at that point. Yeah. 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 I love that. <laughs> no, I love that you ladies brought that up because it, it really is important when we saw the, um, the movie God's Not Dead and how they're trying to raise awareness mm, and how there's so many Christians don't vote mm. and so many are not even registered. And it's so interesting because um, that's where we're going to make the difference. And, and the other, uh, you know, you have the Republican voters, for example, that are registered, like you have the gay Republicans, you have the atheist Republicans, uh, we're not trying to convince them. They're already convinced based on policy and, and many things mm-hmm. of that nature. And, and so that's that. But our job as Christians is to, to encourage Christians to take a stand. The church has been dead for so long. Like my husband was saying uh, to, yes, in yesterday's sermon. Um, and it's because we've allowed um, the enemy to silence us and to instill fear into us for such a long time. And what I mean that is the church body, right? As the whole yeah. and stuff. 
And so it's, it's what you're saying, Leanne, is so important because it is true that if we cannot take it, um, if Christians can't begin to be the warriors that God created us to be, I mean, we're not, I mean, I think of like, um, I, I, I was just thinking the other day, I was thinking of the children because we teach so much biblical concepts yeah. here at the educational center that everything God is interwoven into every lesson. And just the other day we were having a discussion on, um, uh, um, the promised land and how you have these 12 spies that were, you remember? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And only two of them, right. Mm -hmm. that believed they saw all of them saw the same miracles and saw what God had done yeah. for, you know, the Israelites bringing them out of captivity and so on and so forth. But what mm -hmm. really got, um, when we think about it, it's, what is going on with the Christian body and, and here in America is that they've become um, the other 10. They've, they've, they're doubtful. They're fearful. They don't believe that God will, to, will continue to rescue them if they speak up or come against the enemy, the giants mm -hmm. in the land, so to speak. And that's what's happening here in America. Um, they're trying to uh, silence the church, which they've done a really good job at. And, and what I mean mm -hmm. is the enemy, the enemy that's using people in public um, administrative places, right? Yeah. Government and things of that nature. And he's using those people to silence pastors in the church to be fearful and not speak out against um, what's going on in our culture today. And it, and it happens at the poll. It happens in mm. raising your children up, raising up uh, generations that will actually go in there and protect the basic... Um, human life i mean there's so many things we want on for but anyways i like how you how you ladies uh really tied that in because it is true even with isaiah 22 with mm -hmm. voting what you're doing with real impact ocean site you know what i'm saying yeah because um yeah. it really does start with christians and how we're 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 here women of the word is to rally rally the believers right stand up yeah. Get your voice out. Um, look into God's word. What does God's word say? And if, you know, I know so, I've known, I probably grew up more with um, very, what do you call it, liberal-minded Christians when I was growing up because um, it, it <laughs> um, and what I mean by that is that when I was seeing um, Christianity, like the church in whole, it was very, um left leaning in, in many ways, at least what I what I had experienced and stuff. And so it's interesting, like even like the abortion things that was never talked about at church. Um, so I had no idea how to learn about that when I was in college in the sense of really understanding what sanctity of life really means and how precious it is. And it was because of, uh, you know, um, you, uh, church or not church, uh, Christian youth groups in the universities where uh, that I was meeting them and I wasn't learning about that at church. And so, and it's just interesting. So that's why it's so important as leaders. If you women are listening right now, um, especially if you're a pastor's wife, I just, and if you are taking a stand and you are speaking up, I just, or if, I encourage you to keep doing that, but you've got to help the other pastor's wives do the same thing because they, if you can just influence just even one person it, from a biblical perspective, and I don't mean influencing them in the sense of anything for our own personal gain. It's all, it's, we've got to reach them to help them to understand yeah. that now is the time. And I love how you brought that up, Leanne, in the 1916 project, how Seth Gruber said that, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. if not you, then who, and if not now, then when, and it's, it goes back to, um, Gosh, William Wilberforce, he's one of my favorite characters of all time in, in human history. And I love how William Wilberforce was, he never gave up, even to the very end of his life. And he didn't see much of, um, you know, uh, uh, slavery being abolished all the way up until the very end of his And he worked tirelessly. There was times where he was the one person by himself um, fighting for you know against slavery and i mean he literally to the to his his deathbed basically but anyways um that's why it's important that that christians stay <laughs> together Absolutely. and encourage each yeah. other mm -hmm. we're not alone yeah. you know yes and not, and not even that it's like a lot of people i feel like like a lot of christians they always kind of get they they're not really when it comes to, to voting 
let me get back to that. When it comes into voting, they kind of put a broad reason why they don't vote either way. Oh, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. um, and it's like, okay. I'm just going to be frank with it. It's the dumbest thing you could do. Okay. So it's like, <laughs> it, it's almost like we're going to go into a store and the store is about to get robbed and you're out there like, well, if I go in there, beat up the person, I may get, might get sued. And then, you know, I, I'm going to go to jail or something. But if I can go in and help the guy that's being stabbed, hopefully mm -hmm. I can save him. But then again, the ambulance might never appear here on time and he might die. It's almost like that's the reasoning. Yeah. You're like, you know what I'm saying? It's like the Christian took God out of the way and you're fully trying to solve the problem by yourself without even letting God in. Um, and I feel like that's a lot of the Christians when it comes to voting. Oh, well, there's already, we already have the conservatives. We have the, the Democrats, because you you know you have people out there saying I'm a Democrat, but uh, uh, I'm a Christian. Okay, well that's dumb. Um, <laughs> I can help. With, I can have an op open conversation with that with my friends, you know, because they know how I am. I really don't veer around things um, because of abortion. Number one, hello, we are made in the image of God. So if the babies are being killed, we are the only kind that is made in His image, not animals, human beings. So it doesn't matter where you think of it. So uh, as a Democrat, it, yeah, it's pretty dumb that you can say I'm a Democrat and, and I'm, a, I'm a Christian and I'm going to vote that way. So so when it comes to really voting, you don't have to go either way, either one. and Because because sometimes they reason too much and then they end up going, you know what, never mind. I just want to deal with it. You don't want to deal with it? Okay, well, don't come and feel sorry for people that are like we're talking about right now, the sex trafficking. Don't be that one person in the back when you voted the other way or not vote at all and say, oh, my gosh, that's so disgusting. I can't believe people do that. Really? Did you do anything for that? Mm -hmm. Did yeah. you even stand for their right by voting the correct way? No, you didn't vote at all. So not voting, that means you're, mo you're voting for the wrong side. Absolutely. So, I mean, the, the Christians have to understand that not voting is such a huge, um, I can't even put anything on it. It's almost like. You know, when it says in the Bible, if you harm one one of these little ones, you might as well tie a rock around, you know, that stone in your neck and then jump down. It's mm -hmm. That's literally what you're doing when you don't vote for the right thing. And I mean, Miss Nicole here is almost going to be blue in her face talking and screaming on every Sunday. <laughs> and it's like, this is what they're doing, you know? Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and you're right. When you said it this morning, it's like, yeah, I know you guys don't want to hear it, but how else are you going to hear it? Absolutely. Wouldn't it be the best Amen. place to hear that would be in your Christian, Christian church where God sits in with all these believers. So when it comes to this, stand your ground. So what if somebody call you crazy? They hated Jesus. And who do we follow? Jesus. Yes, uh, what do you say? They're going to persecute you. So at this moment, we need to stand with him and yes we might look crazy but we don't care we really don't Amen. i don't care <laughs> so, um i really <laughs> for those that for anybody that's going to be watching it that this one um podcast that's a leader stand mm -hmm. on your ground and know that there are people out there that will stand with you don't feel alone first of all you have god and then you have us Amen. yes we're Amen. crazy i don't know <laughs> <laughs> I love how you said that. <laughs> Leanne, when you said how Nicole says it when she's like almost blue in the face, yeah. I just got this image of her sounding the alarm, so to speak, yes. blowing the trumpet. Come on, people, wake up. This <laughs> is what's, you know, but yeah, I love that. That just, I got that whole image. Yeah. yeah. When you're up there explaining everything. <laughs> I'm like, Lord, use me as a watchman. Come on. <laughs> but it's, no, it's so that's true. A, that's amazing. I love it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Go girl. Yeah. So I think, I think really, I think the purpose of today's podcast is encouraging all ladies who are listening to get out, get, get yourself registered, make mm -hmm. sure you are registered. If you, maybe it's been a while since you voted, maybe you never voted, but yeah. now is the time to register. If you're close by, you can uh, come in any Sunday or mm -hmm. Wednesday evening. Yeah. We'll, Nicole will walk you through the process. Yeah. Uh, there's so many of us that will help you to, um, how to fill out, you know, the form to get registered. But now is the time. Make sure your addresses are correct. Make sure, you know, all of those things. And then 
when that's done, who is in your area, in your district, who's running? Um, you can make such an impact and a difference to get registered, number one, um, do your research, study these candidates, know what they're about. Li um, let's listen to them. I know one of the things that we'll probably be doing, um, we've been praying about um, a, a candidate forum, which, you know, I know many times people, you know, needs, there's so many other ways of doing things. And, but um, I think for us, we're, we're praying about if it, if that's something that we're going to can that we are going to do or if we're just going to do like one-on-one -on -one with candidates in our area. So for example, in our area in Oceanside is district three, there's four people running for councilman for district three where our church is located. Mm. And so it's maybe we might just reach out to them personally or do um, a zoom or a, a one of the recordings on here. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important for us. If you, especially if you live in this area to hear their view, what do yeah. they believe? Do they line up with you biblically? And in, in some cases, I know we get our voter guide out. Um, there's uh, one of the candidates that did not answer any of the questions at, at all. And this is for school board. And yeah. he basically, uh, his name's Mike Blessing. Mm -hmm. And you'll see on our voter guide, we did everything um, the way you're supposed to. And when we hand out our questions, so... But it just goes to show you as a believer, if you had voted for Mike Blessing before in previous elections and he was a registered Republican, um, why is he not answering these questions? You know, and that's mm -hmm. something that we hope that maybe we can get him on an interview and allow him to maybe elaborate. Right. That's something. Let's why, why are you not answering this? What's you know. So there's so many things that uh, we'd like to do and we're, we're, we're praying about how that's going to be. But the main thing mm -hmm. I think message for today is get out, get registered and get ready yeah. to do your research, be informed of who you're voting for and just don't vote, vote, vote blindly or don't mm -hmm. sit at home and not vote, like get yeah. out and vote. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, and, the, and another thing too, I just want to add on there. Stop believing the lie that, um, what did I say? Stop believing the lie that <laughs> even if we vote, it's not going to count because they're going to change. Stop believing Amen. that lie. Come on. They're telling you that so you don't vote. Okay? Yes. And if you're, you know, like I said, put God first because Amen. you will not have these fears. These confusion will not come. And if you're a leader, stop it. You better stop. Stop believing them lies. <laughs> and if we need some encouragement, call us, girl. We got a here. Let's do it. But uh, <laughs> and we're here uh, uh, every week. Every week we're Monday through Thursday. Sometimes we take a break. Sometimes we just don't. You know. But um, God gives us that gift of energy that comes from coffee that He provides us, <laughs> and we just keep going. <laughs> I be not. <laughs> she so, it's a, you I'm know like, so just... <laughs> she's sensitive to caffeine oh uh, you'll literally see me doing cartwheels in the daytime and then at nighttime i can't sleep i freak out <laughs> i'm literally doing cartwheels literally. herbal uh, tea yes. herbal yeah. i love tea so if you're that a woman that's like nicole perfect you guys can connect drink a bunch of tea while we're sitting here leanne and i drinking Coffee, or, or you can do a decaf macchiato or something. Yeah, yeah. sounds good. Whatever, whatever you gotta do. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta get it. Get we get. We're getting to work. We got a lot of people to save. We got our children. You gotta really keep it local and keep it to what you what really, really matters to you. Yeah, we work with kids and we're also moms, so children is number one on our list, and that's Amen. who they're trying to get a hold of, and we're not gonna mm. let that go because uh, you know we're mama bears, like they said. I Amen. Don't know this, but yeah. So, <laughs> you know, think about it. If you're a leader out there and you're a mom, know what's important to you. Look up each candidate and see what they're voting on. That that that's it. It's very simple. Absolutely. And then you go on to your next next thing down your list. What's the second thing that's important to you? Look it up. You don't have to go by like, oh my gosh, I'm so confused. No, it's not confusing. It's very <laughs> simple. <laughs> yeah and there's voter guides you know? too. Like yes. we're, we're putting one yeah. out and and it yeah. it lines up exactly and you have yeah. to make that conscious decision with yeah. where you're at and stuff mm -hmm. um with your you know i want to um real quick because i know we're coming to the end 1619 project um 
1916. I'm sorry. What did I say? No. So she's getting confused, and it's not. Sorry. It's not that it's not. There was the 1619 project. Yeah. And then after later, they came and made another one where it's the 1916. 1916 project. project. Ah, but the 1619 right. project was the the liberal side of everything, like in the sense of uh, trying to reshape um, American values. And so 1916 project, Seth Gruber. And it's interesting because he kind of did it in a way to kind of just, I don't want to say confuse people, but make people think, wait, what, what was the 19, you know, 16 project is kind of a way of saying, hey, this is the truth. That wasn't the truth. And so he's uh, basically bringing this with facts and everything as far as like the abortion industry and how it got started and how it all is connected. We're showing his film um, uh, next Sunday, next Sunday, September 29. Yeah, so like six days from now. Yes, we're so, excited. So today's Monday. Yes. <laughs> so this Sunday coming up, come <laughs> here to At the Cross Church. Um, if you are local, um, even if you're San Diego on our way, come. We're going to be showing this movie. Yes. Yes, film, yes, absolutely. Yes, come join fellowship. There's going to be someone to talk about it afterwards. Okay. Talk about what the White Rose Resistance is and what they stand for, uh, and all of that. I mean, I remember when it first started, I joined up and I was like, "Oh, I love Seth Gruber. I'm going to support this." And it's it's really amazing what Seth is doing. He's standing in the gap and he is so bold. And it was him. I saw speak at a school board meeting. In under three minutes, he spoke so fast. No fear. He didn't stop. He said pages worth. And that is what inspired me. My very mm -hmm. first school board speech to do the very same thing. I was, whoa, wow, God. I was like, okay, <laughs> you be like that. And that, that is why I go to these school board yeah. meetings and speak Amen. the way I do Amen. with such boldness and so quickly and so much in such a short amount of time. That is all God. But in, yeah. through what Seth Gruber does, that inspired me. So imagine what us ladies in leadership are doing. Mm -hmm. What we stand up for when we know that God is for us, when we are bold, Amen. right? Mm -hmm. Imagine who we can inspire through that and mm -hmm. what those numbers will come to be. Those 40 million Christians not voting can turn to be zero. Mm -hmm. If all of us inspire Ooh. somebody, inform yeah, somebody. Wow. Amen. In Jesus, man. In the name of Jesus. In the name Come of on. Jesus. <laughs> all right. So, um, all right. So, thank you for tuning in. We appreciate you. Um, and just stay connected. Um, we're here. Um, we are looking at still putting together a little something before the end of the year. So, stay tuned. We'll let you know what that looks like. Um, I just, we just want to be open. We want to meet you in person. We want to um, fellowship with you, encourage you, pray with you. Um, and so we just appreciate you tuning in every Monday or Mondays that we're not, but following us, <laughs> follow our Instagram pages and see what, you know, uh, what I, 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 I know we talked about this last week, but putting faith or the week, a couple of weeks before what faith looks like faith in action. Right. And so taking action is that's faith is taking action. And so everything we're doing behind the scenes, everything we're doing now, um, is action and that's what god wants us to do he wants us to actually walk out on the water keep our eyes focused on him and trust that in the storm and everything that's going on in america and the world that god's got this and all you have to do is just walk out on faith take that faith in action and the rest is easy because then you got everybody around you got your sisters you got your little uh, like with us three, we have our little tribe and everything. And so it's just a blessing. So thank you for tuning in. Um, let's just praise out real quick. So Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you, God, for this opportunity to reach your women, Father, out there in the community and across the state of California and all over um, this country as they're tuning in, listening to Women of the Word. So Father, again, thank you for this opportunity. We pray that you would continuously be glorified in everything that we do with Women of the Word ministry in jesus name we pray amen. amen all right ladies we'll see you next week see us uh sunday we'll hopefully see you on sunday the 29th